Hi everyone, Peter here. Today, uh, I'm gonna show you this sculpture I just made by carving it out of solid metal with a soup spoon. So obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let me show you what I actually did. I started out with a big block of styrofoam to make something called the pattern. This is a styrofoam version of what I'm gonna, of the sculpture I'm gonna make. And then I'm gonna make a mold, which I will pour molten aluminum into. And styrofoam's nice, but I wouldn't recommend it because even though I was wearing a respirator while cutting it with the hot knife, it still gave me some lightheadedness and a headache because the fumes from melting styrofoam are very, very toxic. So be careful out there. Next, I set out some flasks. That's what these wooden boxes are called for packing the sand molds. I sized them appropriately and I started out with something called oil sand, which is a temporary type of sand I'm gonna be putting in here just so I can get the first half of the mold made. I'll put the oil sand in here, make a little spot covering half of the pattern up, and then I'll put in resin sand on top of the other half. The resin sand will be more permanent and not reusable. So once I have the oil sand set up, I start mixing the resin sand. It's just a big bag, in this case a big bag of regular sand. First we mix in the catalyst, two and a half minutes, and then make a little trough and we mix in the resin. And the reason why I make a little trough in the sand to pour the resin and the catalyst into is so that when the molar, that's the thing that mixes the sand, starts, it doesn't get the sticky, sticky resin all over the inside of the machine. Two and a half more minutes for that. Press start. And then it's done. In the meantime, I get my, my tools ready. Packing tools, keep them over here in the filing cabinet a table leg, this metal thing, a block of wood, everything a young packer could need. And there it is, my resin sand. This stuff will start setting in about 20 to 30 minutes, so you gotta not dilly-dally too much. A thin layer of talc keeps the resin sand from sticking too much to whatever you're packing it against. The first layer there is important, that's why I'm using a sifter so that you can get in there and get all the tiny little details from the pattern. And then I just gradually keep putting in layers and packing it in, more and more layers, more and more packing. There were many, many steps here uh, that didn't make it into the video, many hours. Uh, that <laughs> I think I have like 11 hours of video and uh, trimmed it down, managed to trim it down to 20 minutes. Okay, so you get the idea. I just did the same thing over and over again here half of the mold for all three of these pieces. I have two pieces for the sculpture, and then there's a little base piece. So it's a three-part It's a three part sculpture, and then once it's made into aluminum, I'm gonna weld them together. I smooth off the halves, flip them over, and there it is. There's half the mold done for each piece. Oh yeah, those are looking good. They're pretty heavy. And I also don't want to drop them on the floor too hard because they could crack. There we go. The oil sand goes back in the bucket and I clean up this half. Quick work with the air gun. Here I'm putting in some keys in the corners of the molds and I make them asymmetrical so that I can't put the halves back together backwards. That's all those do and they help hold the halves together as well. I reattach the, the flasks and it's time to do some more sand packing. It takes a, at, at minimum about three hours for the sand to set completely. So there is some time elapsed here. Some more talc goes in there. And then there we go. Some more sand. A little bit for the fine details at first. Then you pack it in with all your different tools. Three hours later, Pull it apart again, it looks like a some kind of weird sherbet ice cream, but not nearly as tasty, I assure you. 
Now these were pretty difficult to get apart, even though I put talc in between the two halves to make it so they didn't bind to each other. The, the, the styrofoam pattern on the inside was holding them together. And usually this could be a problem. There's something called draft, which is where you don't want the too much, too much of an angle from the pattern to hold the sand together. But in this case, I wasn't too worried if the styrofoam got torn apart because I'm going to tear the styrofoam apart to get it out anyways. I'm not too worried about my initial styrofoam sculpture. It's just a placeholder. There you go. It took me a long time to get all this styrofoam out of here. It was very stubborn, but it was kind of, um, kind of satisfying work after a while, once you got into it. Oh yeah. And then it's important to put in some vents. These things I carve into half of each mold, just with an old drill bit. These ensure that when you pour metal down into the mold, air has a way to get out. That's why I attach each, attach vents down to the tips of each part of the, of the mold where air could get trapped. It's just, just kind of figure it out. Imagine the metal pouring in there. These are hills, holes I'm drawing in the top of the base piece for a place to pour metal into. And then this is something called mold wash, which is basically just graphite powder suspended in alcohol. Alcohol is just a vehicle for it. And the graphite just makes it a smoother, better surface for casting than just playing against the sand. Here we are, I'm gonna glue the two halves together of all of them. This is, some, it's in a mustard bottle I know, but it's called core paste. It's just basically a heavy duty type of glue that's good. I mean, what, what are you gonna to use to glue sand blocks together? This stuff. I put some cinder blocks on top of the pieces to give them some weight while they dry. A generous amount of this core paste never hurts anybody except that you don't want it going to the inside of the mold. That's really the main issue there. Yeah, squirt it all out. I mean, it does kind of look like mustard. Maybe like Cajun aioli a little bit. I'm not sure. Next, it's time to do some banding. But these are basically just steel bands that I ratchet and get really tight with wooden wedges around the molds to make sure that they stay tight together so that when the metal goes in there, there aren't any leaks between the two pieces of sand. Now I'm positioning them in the sand pit where we're gonna do the metal pour and putting the cups and risers on here. This is just makes it it's just an easier target to pour metal into and the risers make sure that the air goes up just as high as the the metal as well it's just like a a pressure thing now thankfully i have some of my classmates that are going to help me do a little metal pour here as long as as well as the foundry professor so thank you to them here we are firing up the crucible in the furnace got to put some old Aluminum ingots in there, some scrap aluminum, and we just gotta let it melt and turn into liquid. Oh yeah, that's someone's old project that they spray painted. It's aluminum, the spray paint will just turn into slag on top. All right, there I am on the right in the white helmet. About to pull the crucible full of molten aluminum out of the furnace. Oh, look at that glow. This is skimming, just pulling all the impurities out of it that have risen to the surface so we don't pour them into the mold. And I think this is, well, I can't remember exactly what gas this is, maybe nitrogen or something. We blow into the aluminum, which makes it better somehow. I should get clarification on that. It's been explained to me, but I forgot. Anyways, here 
You can see, see, just pour it right in there. So, so pretty. On my end, I have two handles, so I control the tilt, and Victoria, on the other end, holds it and just lets it turn in her hands. Take it. I'm gonna, we're going to go back, go ahead and fill these cups up. We're going to go back and put one more ingot in before we do this. So there wasn't quite enough in the crucible to fill all three molds, so we got to go back into the crucible and melt a little bit more, get a little refill. So just let that go, Peter, until it All right, here we are, back at it. Not even showing up nicely outside. It looks so nice when it's not on camera. It's a beautiful glow. That's Allison holding the camera. Thank you. Splish. POV, you're Peter doing metal casting. ASMR metal casting. That's how it really is. That's how it be, though. Ooh, more splashes. There you go, ASMR there. I like that. That's a fun mess. It just looks so yummy when you do that. That's why I'm wearing gear. All right, in the final mold. Ooh, it's so long. Any extra we'll have, we'll pour into those ingots right there that are behind the mold. If I fill the cup here, oh, okay, you got it. You got enough for at least one ingot. And then the ingots can be remelted in the crucible again for the next aluminum pour. Just let it take it all in take it. I'll do a scrape out here and we'll just dump it in with sand. Upside down in a shake. Nice. One goober come out. Sick. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! Woo> <laughs> yeah. Videographer there. Thank you, Allison. You're welcome, Peter. Vic, thank you. Hi. Kevin, thank you, everybody. Thanks for the there. help. All right, so then I got to open these up after they've uh, cooled at least a little bit. Give them 15, 20, 30 minutes. Bust them open. There you see it. The aluminum version of the sculpture I originally made in styrofoam. That is a rewarding moment, cracking open these molds. It's, it's the moment of truth. It's when you see if the metal poured into all the nooks and crannies you intended it to. And you can see that the metal poured into all my little vents and everything too. So I spray them off with water to get all the sand and stuff off of them. Also helps them cool down faster. Then it's time to do something called chasing which is just cleaning up the surface of the metal there is something called a parting line around all of the edges of these sculptures which is where the two halves of the molds came together and there's always like a little bit of metal that tries to seep out into that crack between the two halves right so that's a part that's called the parting line on the sculpture and so I've got to clean all that up. I'm using a little die grinder here, air powered. Reminds me terribly of the dentist, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Clean that up a little bit. However, unfortunately, 
all this grinding on the aluminum makes smooth spots that is very, uh, you can see it compared to the cool texture from the styrofoam that I got. So I have to use this thing called a needle scaler right here, which I think was originally supposed to be used for like stripping paint off of surfaces or something. In this case, it's very useful for roughening up the surface of the aluminum again. And it, the, the texture it makes on the aluminum blends in very well with the texture from the styrofoam. So then I start cutting off all the little pieces of aluminum, the cups and the vents, and preparing to weld these together. I will warn you, the welding portion of this video has a lot of flashing uh, lights. They're even, it's even kind of hard for me to watch. So if you're like sensitive to flashing lights at all, uh, just be warned, be careful. Uh, in the future, I should figure out how to film welding better, maybe through a piece of tinted glass or maybe polarized glass or something. There's gotta be a good way to do it because my camera was just having a hard time adjusting so fast to like the dramatic and sudden changes in light right so i've done some i've done i mean this whole class i've been doing steel welding but this is the first time i've done aluminum welding which is kind of similar but also a lot different because this, the aluminum just welds so much softer uh, it's so much easier to practically dig a hole straight into the aluminum, even solid chunks of aluminum, I could just burrow right into it almost effortlessly. So you just gotta move a lot faster almost, or I guess it also comes down to the settings, but it's pretty fun, pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, it's cool to watch all the little sparks and little flames fly around. Not a bad weld for my first try, I think. That's the base to the second piece, and here's the top piece. First you just tack it together. So it's held in one place, and then you can go around doing more thorough welds. There are also some areas in this sculpture where there was some shrinkage, which created cracks. Uh, as the metal cooled in the mold, it shrunk, which made some cracks in the, in the metal. So I just went back and kind of welded inside those cracks to fill it back in. And all of this, all my welds I've made here, I need to go back over again, grind it again with the flap discs, hit it again with the die grinder a little bit. Once again, I hit it again with the needle scaler, just blend it all together so that the welds aren't so apparent. Just try to make it blend in. Plus I put four little welds on the bottom of the sculpture as feet. Here we are. This is the acetylene torch, the tank of acetylene and what I'm gonna use this for is to put a layer of soot on the sculpture because right now it's just one big flat color. The acetylene flame lets out this thick, thick plume of smoke and the soot just lays down real thick on whatever surface it touches. So once I cover some of the sculpture in soot, I can then wipe some of it back away. The soot will be left in some of the crevices and my intention was to kind of make a gradient where it's darker on the bottom and lighter towards the top of the sculpture just to make it slightly more visually interesting. At least that's what I intended, you know? Just a little Brillo pad here or scotch bright, whatever you want to call it, easily. I mean, I could have wiped this off with my finger too. This didn't actually heat up the sculpture at all. It's just, it's pretty much just carbon buildup. And then I should have been wearing my respirator for this part too, so don't do as I do, do as I say. Just a, a clear, coat, clear coat to seal it all in, and then it's pretty much done. There you have it. Time to put it in the gallery. Ta-da! Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Pretty happy how this turned out. I like the organic form of it. I've been drawing weird, blobby shapes for years and years and years and I'm just slowly slowly getting towards a point where I can uh, make sculptures that are similar shapes it's a such a such a different medium as you maybe got a slight glimpse at here like this probably took 15 hours for me to make and there are so many steps that weren't directly associated with actually forming the sculpture just 
just like this ancillary steps, if that makes any sense. It's just, just a fun, I love how hands-on it is though, is what I'm trying to say. I'm enjoying learning about it. So thanks for watching everyone. Let me know if you have any questions and yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Goodbye. Goodbye.